Hello, and welcome to The Breakdown. Not sure what that accent was, but today we're gonna to be getting into Malazan, Book of the Fallen, in a new series here on the channel where I hope to jump from franchise to franchise and pretty much give you as much background information I can on the publication and reception, as well as length, word count, things like that, for our favorite fantasy sci-fi stories. Now, whatever franchise I cover in this series, kind of take that as a sign that there's gonna be more content regarding that series coming down the road this channel. So hey, if you want to see more Malice and content, be sure to like, subscribe, all that hoary YouTube stuff. But today we're going to be talking about Malice with a focus on Book of the Fallen. If you're not sure what that clarification means, don't worry, I'll explain it. But jumping right on into it, Malice and Book of the Fallen was written by Steven Erickson. Now there are many more Malice and books outside of the 10 book core series we'll be focusing here on this video. And they were written by either Steven Erickson or Ian Esselmount. And one of my favorite facts about the Malice series that actually had a very organic growth between these two authors who did conceptualize it between the two of them. In fact, Malazan was originally just a backdrop for a role-playing game they were a part of. That's why it just felt like a very natural step for Ian to start publishing his own Malazan books starting in 2005 with The Knight of Knives. But it's important to remember all Malazan Book of the Fallen books are written purely by Steven Erickson, though there are series within Malazan that just Ian has written. More on that in a minute. I just really want to emphasize that both authors have completely canonical entries in this world, and if you want to get the full Malazan picture, you must view them as equal. But let's go ahead and jump into the details around the core Malazan books. The series kicks off with Gardens of the Moon, which was released April 1st of 1999. It is 209,000 words long, and for this series, I'm going to be pulling from a random review website that kind of goes into whatever series I'm getting into and give their thoughts and how they contrast to my own. And for this, I've chosen the fantasy book bookreview.com. And despite being a massive Malazan fan myself, I found they were a little too generous in some of their reviews, but that being said, they gave Gardens of the Moon a 9 out of 10. This is the one that I did struggle the most with in my read-through, which is a very common criticism you do see for Gardens of the Moon. Erickson especially has a writing style where he tends to just kind of push the reader into it, and several books down the road, you'll get the full context of what you experienced in Gardens of the Moon. It means that a lot of people's first time through the series, the books they look back on continue to rise higher and higher in their rankings and on a reread who knows what might be your favorite but gardens of the moon is still not my favorite but i do respect giving it a 9 out of 10 with the full context of the 10 core mouths and books but let's go ahead and move on to book two dead house gates dead house gates was released september 1st in the year 2000 and was even larger than gardens of the moon with a whopping 272,000 words but don't worry the books are going to continue to get bigger this one was also given a 9 out of 10 by fantasy book review which, wow, this website I randomly chose is a very big fan of the Malas and books, and I don't blame them. I don't have that much to say about Dead House Gates, aside from that it does start the trend within the Malas and series of shifting entire storylines, and essentially, while it is a thematically cohesive series, you're not just going on one adventure with one set of characters, and that can be disorienting. But I promise you, if you push through to the end, it's absolutely worth it. But let's go ahead and move on to my personal second favorite Malas and book, Memories of Ice. Release Released December 6th in 2001, this stepped up the word count a huge amount, released with 356 thousand words. And in researching this video, it really impressed me how consistent Erickson was putting out some of the greatest fantasy books of all time. Much like in Hollywood, where the more time you spend in pre and post production, the greater the payoff, it seemed the fact that Erickson and Esselmount had been living in this world for so long and obviously discussing these books with each other had an incredible benefit, not only for the clarity of vision and imagination that was presented in the stories, but also allowing them a faster turnaround and incredibly high quality that most authors can only dream of. This is three books in three years that are all amazing. And for the first time, I'm going to say I completely agree with Fantasy Book Review's ranking of giving this a perfect 10 out of 10. It's just an amazing read. And I will say it's also where I personally started to really get the experience of Malazan as a reader. But moving on from there, we have book four, House of Chains. And for me, this was a step back into slightly weaker for Malazan, but it's still very far from just okay, and I would say above just good. House of Chains was released December 2nd in 2002, keeping up the momentum of just having book, 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 but it was a step down in word count at just 306,000 words. 
that's still a lot of words. <laughs> I think this is where Fantasy Book Review was the most generous, giving this a 9 out of 10 as well. Looking back on these books that, perfectly honest, I don't remember 100% clearly, I would have labeled this a bit lower, but once again, it's still above just good. But from there, we step it up again to Midnight Tides, which to me is where Erickson came into full bloom as an author, and while I do not like this book as much as Memories of Ice, it feels like to me it's where he started walking the strongest with Malazan as a whole, and the vision becomes so much clearer and so far beyond what many other fantasy authors can even dream of writing one day. This is the book that to me solidified Malice in Book of the Fallen as one of the greatest series the fantasy genre had ever seen. Even if, which they aren't, the rest of the books after this point had been terrible, I would have been recommending Malazan for people in the experience alone with the first books. But Midnight Tides was released March 1st in 2004 and was a step down in word count at 270,000 words. Fantasy Book Review gave this one also a 10 out of 10. It feels a bit absurd giving a fantasy series this high on marks consistently, but what I will say is if Malzin is your specific personal taste, you'll probably be reviewing it similarly. But this was the first Malazan book to step under 300,000 words since Deadhouse Gates. But don't worry, because the next one, if you were worried for some reason, jumps well over 300,000, and that would be The Bone Hunters. Released March 1st, 2006, exactly two years after the release of the previous Malazan book, the largest gap between books up to this point, the 365,000 word tome that is Bone Hunters was also given a 10 out of 10 by Fantasy Book Review. Wow, it's crazy to me that this is the largest gap between Malice and books yet, and it's just two years with consistently putting out this quality and this page count. We move on there to Reaper's Gale, which was released May 7th of 2007, with an incredible 386,000 words. And this is one of the ones I frustratingly have a really hard time remembering. Really need to reread this series, and it's something I've been looking forward to doing for quite some time. This was followed up by Toll the Hounds in June 30th, 2008, with 392,000 words, the largest Malazan book to date. I think this is the point where if you've stuck it through in Malazan, it'll start to click no matter who you are. You do start seeing quite a few returning characters and understanding the larger political implications of what the series is trying to get at, as well as how it is all connected thematically. It was also at this point that I really started to appreciate Erickson's writing of women. This was followed up just a little bit over a year later with The Dust of Dreams, released August 18th of 2009, coming close to breaking the word count with 382,000 words. Good lord, how does he write that much every day? This was also given a 10 out of 10 from Fantasy Book Review, and I'll just say the next book is as well, and I agree with the next one, because that's the conclusion of the series with The Crippled God. The Crippled God was released February 15th of 2011, and had the largest gap between releases of any miles in book, but it makes absolute sense with how much work had to go in with bringing all the elements of the series together in some form of conclusion for Malazan as the whole. And I'm gonna repeat something I said in my review of The Crippled God. One of the mistakes I went into this series with was thinking it would be some kind of like MCU crossover event in the end, where all these different players who had yet to interact would somehow come together, but that's not the point of Malazan. And honestly, I think it would cheapen the Malazan experience to do that. And instead, what The Crippled God does is takes a lot of the themes and ideas that have been building throughout the series and conclude them in an immensely satisfying way. More so than any other series, not just from Canada, but I believe the world as a whole, Mal and Book of the Fallen delivers on the genre title epic. But let's go ahead and get to the final numbers. The total word count for Malice in Book of the Fallen is an incredible 3,325,000 words. That means Erickson wrote over 3 million words in the span of 12 years. That is incredible. The total pages, if you're going with the tour released, are 7,384, but if you're going with the mass market paperback, it'll be even more at 11,216. But I know a lot of you your little audiobook hose. And I got you covered too. If you're going to listen to Malice in Book of the Fallen, it's going to take you 16 days, 5 hours, and 8 minutes. I wonder what the smallest amount of time someone has actually done that in is. Obviously, you can't listen for 16 days straight. As I mentioned before, though, this is just Malice in Book of the Fallen, and there's a lot more going on in this world outside the core series. And I personally am going to go on to read those books in the near future. I just also want to reread the core books, and I'm kind of conflicted on where to go. Let me know what you think I should do in the comments down below. It goes without saying, though, that yes, 
Smiles and Book of the Falling is debatably the largest fantasy series ever traditionally published, depending on how you count it. And even though there are a couple series that debatably have more entries, again, depending on how you count some series that have had just a ton of authors pouring in things like Star Wars, it'll be a long time before Malazan is a solid contender that will dethrone it, as it is still having books released. Here's the next one that's gonna come out. My concluding thoughts, though, here are that the dedication of these two authors to this series is absolutely remarkable. These two have dedicated themselves to realizing a world they clearly love in a way that maybe hasn't even been seen since Tolkien. While I think Fantasy Book Review was a little too generous with some of its rankings, I don't blame them for being so. It's unlike any other experience you're going to have in literature. And my recommendations for reading the series range from people who like Middle Earth to people who like Berserk. It kind of has a balance of those two worlds in terms of its nihilism, but also wonder and beauty. It really is like if you took a lot of elements from these two and blended them and they made it a lot bigger. And I'm going to give this a go ahead and absolutely read with my favorite mouths and book being The Crippled God or Memories of Ice. I can't really remember. And I think the weakest for me is still Gardens of the Moon because upon going back to it, I wish the approach to introducing people to the series had been a little bit different because it makes it so hard to recommend. But please let me know what you think of this new video series and let me know any recommendations you have for improving the presentation style in the comments down below. I obviously pulled quite a bit here from Dead Meets Numbers segment, so massive shout out to James A. Janice for running one of my favorite YouTube channels on the platform. And as a shout out to him, I'll end this video like he ends his. Be good people.